out, AMD. You did it, AMD. You did it, man. You came out with a new CPU, the 9000 series. And look, this is from the leak, the 9950X versus the 14900K, 9950X faster. It's faster in gaming, man. Huh? We got, remember, remember this? Oh, 16% IPC uplift compared to Zen 4. That ought to make it just slightly faster than X3D chips, right? So the 9700X is gonna be faster than the, the 7800X3D, right? Right? Well, not quite. Actually, um, we had some spicy numbers from uh, Hardware Unboxed today, and the 70, the 9700X is virtually identical in performance to the 7700X, which, <laughs> that's just an L, bro. That's an Intel moment, man. That's a plus nanometer moment. This is like Zen++, plus plus, dude. Um, this is actually uh, Zen 5% because it's only 5% faster, you know? Um, actually, we're behind the 14600K here. This is 13600K levels of gaming. Um, and keep in mind, Zen, Zen cores are performed the same. Um, so a Ryzen 7 is going to perform the same as a Ryzen 9 for AMD. It's just the way their architecture works. But this is pretty funny here. So looking at these numbers, I did the math. The 7800X 3D... All right, the 7800X 3D got uh, 181 frames. Cool, 181 frames. Well, the 9700X 3D, this is the predecessor, mind you, got 155 game frames. And this is over 13 games with a 4090, 1080p. That makes the 7800X 3D 16% faster than the 9700X. Or, in other words, the 9700X is 14% slower than the new X than the old X3D part. Uh, <laughs> what happened uh, What happened to this IPC, huh? Where'd the IPC go? Or was that just a lie? Um, okay, I'm, I'm gonna give AMD the benefit of the doubt. I don't think it was a lie. I think there really is an average of 16% IPC, but there's one main reason we are not seeing it with the Ryzen 9700X, and that's not because of its power limits. Its power limits are concerning for sure, especially if you look here. Let me move myself. Um, you know, Gamers Nexus tests an all core load and it's bottom fragging. The 9700X is getting 4.5 gigahertz all core. That's uh, one gigahertz left than, less than my 13600K all core, but hey, um, that's really low and that's because it's power limited to like 65 or like 80 watts or something. I think it's 65 watts, it's so low. There's no reason to hamstring your CPU uh, by doing that out of the box in my opinion. But I digress. The real reason this CPU is performing so bad despite it get, it's getting that IPC uplift is no other than the architecture of Ryzen itself. Now, most people, I don't think they're aware that Ryzen is a chiplet-based architecture, okay? And most of the benefits that we've gained from Ryzen, from Zen 1 to now, are, you know, sure, we're getting node shrinks. And first off, we're going on Zen 4 to Zen 5, from 5 nanometer to 4 nanometer. So that's one reason. Now, we did get a huge density increase with this node, so that doesn't explain everything here. But the main reason that we are not seeing that 16% IPC uplift is because the IO die right here. It takes in all the information from the rest of your components and sends it to these uh, core chiplets, right? Well, this IO die has not been reworked at all. It's the exact same IO die, same nanometer, exact same architecture that we got last time. So AMD, they did rework these cores from the ground up, new architecture, new node, all the bells and whistles and they are faster but they're bottlenecked by this io die this io die can't handle ram over 6000 megahertz and if it, and if i mean it can go faster than that but you have to run the um you know the frequency the fabric clock at a lower speed and it messes up the bandwidth so the latency on this is too high the bandwidth on it is too low to feed these new cores so i'm concerned that anything they come out with if they don't update the IO die, it's just gonna be super slow. 
Now I know what you're wondering, and are the X3D parts going to make this better? Are they going to bridge the gap? And well, we're looking here at you know the results we got. The 7800X 3D is 16% faster than the 9700X on those 13 games hardware unboxed, tested. And we've already determined the reason why the 9700X is not, it's the same as the 7700X. How do you get that with a 16% IPC uplift? Well, number one, either AMD's lying or number two, it's the IO die. They reuse the IO die and that's the reason it's not performing the way it is. Number three, they just like, <laughs> It's just garbage. Like there's something manufacturing issue. We actually they delayed this launch because of a manufacturing issue. And either ga even Gamers Nexus said that his CPU, uh, the first one he got, was defective. It wouldn't even turn on. So it's one of those three options. The most likely, I think, is the I/O die. This I/O die is the exact same. They've confirmed that, and it's bottlenecking the rest of the system. This is kind of like the equivalent of like having a 1080p 60 hertz monitor and upgrading your PC and then not upgrading your monitor. Like you have like a 1650 GPU, 1080p monitor, 60 hertz, and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna upgrade to a 4080 and then you don't change your monitor. Like that's what this is and I don't like it. They need to update the IO die and it needs to be able to um, support lower latency and higher bandwidth because these cores are already bandwidth constrained after just one iteration on AM5. It's pretty sad. Silicon state tech genius on the rise. CPUs, GPUs, never telling lies. Hardware king breaking it down to bits. Dropping knowledge bombs, getting those clicks.